Hi right, everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Flight Simulator 2024. We're going to start by optimizing Windows and your NVIDIA Power Reader. And after that, we will go inside of the game. You have a lot of customization that you can do. So let's start the guide. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X3D or the 7950X3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power uh back then uh, we were recommending to use the best performance but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now let's go to the NVIDIA app. The first thing that I want to recommend, uh, I'm not a huge fan, honestly, of the um overlay so nvidia overlay i really recommend to deactivate this one sometimes it's causing issue like stuttering you're losing some fps with it so i really recommend to deactivate it also we're gonna go to the control panel i'm gonna show you some optimization that you can do so we're gonna go to the manage 3d setting first so the first thing that you should definitely activate it is your low latency mode make sure this one is at on Another thing that I recommend is your power management mode. This one, pretty much the same thing than the, the, the one from Windows. Make sure that you're using normal. Don't use the maximum performance. I'm getting also better boost clock, more FPS with it. And the last one is your shader cache size. By default, your cache will be a driver default like this. And normally it's four gig. Uh, I recommend to start with 10 if you don't have a lot of space on, on your computer. And if you have a lot of space, go with 100 gig. Honestly, it's a game changer for your cache size. Uh, you're going to struggle less with stuttering and also that your game need to recompile and stuff like that. If you install a lot of game, uh, this one can be very good for you. Now let's go to change resolution. The last one, really important to make sure that first of all, that you're selecting the uh, monitor, uh, that uh, first of all, you're using the native resolution of your monitor and also super important to have a proper refresh rate over there. Uh, by default, sometimes when you just change your monitor, it will be at 60 Hertz. Uh, so depending on the type of monitor that you buy, 144, 240, make sure that you're selecting this one. This option also, you can change it on Windows or your Radian driver if you have a Radian car. So no problem with that. The last one is your G-Sync. If you want to activate your G-Sync, really important to select the monitor. It needs to be compatible and you will enable over there. Uh, I'm not using G-Sync me. I always unlock my FPS because I want the lowest input lag. But if you don't like those steering line, definitely activate your G-Sync over there. So now let's go back to the game. So now inside of the game. So first of all, I want to mention this guide is a bit different than my other guide from like a competitive game and stuff like that. 
because in flight simulator you really want like a good experience a good image quality also but also good performance so it's going to be a balance between both I want to mention it has a lot of different parameters that you can change. So sometimes I will just name what I did and sometimes I will explain it for why I did it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So first of all, the display mode, super important to play full screen. If you want the best uh, optimization, you need to play full screen. Make sure that you're playing native also for your resolution. So depending on your monitor, in my case, it's a 1440p. Anti-aliasing, this is pretty much where you're going to change your upscaling technique. You have three different options. TAA, that's not an upscaling technique. It's just the uh, normal temporal anti-aliasing. You have NVIDIA DLSS, so if you have an RTX card, and you have AMD FSR2. So first of all, first recommendation, if you have an RTX card, for sure, go with DLSS. This is the best way to play the game. Uh, it's I'm kind of sad they don't use FSR3 for AMD because all those Radiant guys now can't uh, use the frame generation. And I really like to recommend FSR3 for people who have like an RTX uh, a series for 2000 or 3000 because you can also run FSR3 with frame generation but right now you can't in this game so for DLSS I recommend to go with quality you are gonna get a nice 8% boost in your FPS lower than that the game is, looks too blurry honestly I really like to play quality if you want pure visual quality I recommend DLAA you're gonna lose 2% if you're using that so recommendation if you have a 4000 series or more recent Quality, activate your frame generation. With frame gen, you can expect like something between 32 to 38% boost in your FPS. So honestly, that's pretty huge. If you're using FSR2, uh, I recommend to go again with quality. This is pretty much the best way you can play it. After that, if you go lower than that, the game like too blurry, it's worse than the LSS. And uh, you can, you're going to save like something like 7 to 8% also with your FPS. So let's get back to the LSS. After that, you have this sharpening over there. Normally, by default, it will be at 100. Uh, I like to play between 150 and 170. Honestly, it looks very good. Uh, if you feel that your game is too blurry, definitely go higher. And if you, you feel that your game looks too much like an Instagram filter, go lower. But me, I'm playing at 150. Uh, because I'm using the frame gen, V-Sync is deactivated. Honestly, if you don't have G-Sync or FreeSync and you don't like those steering lines when you're playing the game, you can activate V-Sync. You're not playing Valorant or Counter-Strike. We don't really care about the input lag. So you can activate it over there. If you have the uh, Reflex Low Latency available, for sure, go with On. For frame rate, uh, it's locked because of the frame gen. Uh, but if you don't use frame gen, don't go too crazy with your frame rate. I see a lot of people, sometimes they just unlock their, their uh, frame rate and they're playing on a laptop. And after that, they're getting like a warm computer, start stuttering, the, the CPU is throttling. So don't go too crazy with this one. You're playing Flight Simulator. After that, uh, for global rendering quality, we're going to go with I and we're going to change it by uh, depending on which parameter. It, it's going to go to custom after that. So Terran level of detail, I recommend you go with 100. You're going to gain a nice 5% boost over there. And it's a good spot between quality and performance. So really important, this one. Pre-caching, I recommend to go with Ultra. If you have a decent uh, CPU, when you move fast left to right, uh, it's going to pre-crash, uh, pre-cache, sorry, your off-screen uh, Terran. And uh, it reduce a lot to your stuttering and lag when you do that. So if you can run it, do that. If you have a pretty bad CPU, just go lower than like something like medium, something like that. Displacement mapping, you can uh, it can be activated without any issue. Uh, building trees, plant, and rocks, I recommend to go with I for uh, th those. Grass, honesty, you're you're very high. You know, you're playing a flying game, and I don't see a big difference between medium and I uh, when I'm flying. And also, you're gonna get like three percent boost in your FPS. So this one. It's a good one that you can optimize. Go with medium or even lower than that if you want. Object level of detail, I recommend 100 also. You're going to gain a nice 5% boost over there. Volumetric cloud, this one is tricky. You know, you are in the air. I feel like be, uh, lower than I, the game looks not really good with your cloud. So my recommendation is go with ultra, honestly. Uh, but if you can't run it, Definitely go with I because you're going to lose like 4% for each bracket. So it's pretty huge. Uh, so it's really depend on what's your goal right now. And are you struggling to run the game or not? 
Texture resolution, it really depends on the amount of VRAM that you have on your uh, GPU. So honestly, if you have like 10 gig and more VRAM, you can run like ultra 16 gig over there. It's not a huge issue. So just make sure that all those texture options over there, you adapt it depending on your uh, VRAM. If you have four gig of VRAM, honestly, like go something like medium or even maybe low at like 4X, something like that. Don't go too crazy if you don't have a lot of VRAM in this game. So let's go back to 16 over there. Texture super sampling, 6x6, six six. water wave, they go with medium with this one. I'm not using the retrace shadow, honestly, it tanks my FPS. Um, so you're going to lose like 6 to 7 FPS, percent, sorry, uh, of your FPS with uh, retrace shadow activated. Uh, honestly, all those shadow, I'm not too crazy with those parameters because you're going to lose a lot of FPS. Shadow map, I recommend to go at 1024, tier and shadow 128. Contact and uh, contact shadow, sorry, medium. This will provide you a nice 8% boost in your FPS. Windshield effect, I recommend to go with medium. It's a good compromise. Ambient inclusion, this one is a bit tricky. If you go lower than medium, I feel like the image quality uh, degrade too much. The game looks flat without it. So I recommend to go with high with this one, but you have 4% difference in your FPS. So if you're struggling to run the game, definitely go me medium. If not, go with high. Q map reflection, I recommend 128, uh, sorry. Raymarch reflection and light shaft at medium. You're going to gain a nice 4% boost. I don't use depth of field and motion blur in this game. Uh, I don't like those effects. And honestly, you just want a pure, good image quality, visual, no blurriness and stuff like that. So that's why I'm going with off. Glass cockpit reflection. This one can tank your FPS if your computer is uh, old. I did some tests on my old uh, XPS, my laptop, and oh my god. If I go at I, I'm like losing 15% uh, of my FPS. It's pretty crazy. So go with medium with this one. Uh, you can definitely test higher than that, but, but make sure that you're just testing this parameter because it can change uh, your FPS uh, by a, a, a big chunk. Character quality, I recommend to go with I. Traffic airport quality, I recommend to go with off. Um, after that, air traffic, you can stay at I. Honestly, the, if you are like in the big city and you start stu stuttering because of that, uh, definitely lower this. But normally, it should not be an issue when you're just flying in the air. Road traffic, sea traffic, I recommend to go with off. And Fauna, go with medium. After that, you have those online parameter. Uh, I did some testing and honestly, the AI offline can be tricky. Uh, you can tank your FPS a lot with this one. So I just recommend, honestly, you want the pure, uh, a nice experience with the Flight Simulator 2024. I recommend the real time online. Make sure that your photogrammetry is uh, checked. This one really, really important. Live weather activated, multiplayer activated, and this is pretty much it. Also, make sure that you select a server with a good ping. So in my case, I'm East 33 MS. It's pretty good. And this is pretty much it. You also can, uh, if you want to limit your data consumption, you can uh, also uh, change your cache limit if you have to do that. You can also do, do it with NVIDIA. I have another guide that dedicated for your NVIDIA parameter. You can go, uh, for example, at 100 gig for your NVIDIA cache. You can change that directly in the NVIDIA app. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my uh, Flight Simulator 2024 guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.